Okay, in this video we're going to look at some different systems and classify them depending on whether they are unstable, stable, marginally stable, things like that. We know how to do that now because we know that system stability is very much tied to where the roots of the characteristic equation of the system are located. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the stability of these systems. So part A, our systems is described like this. Here's a differential equation relating the output y of t to the input f of t. What's important for us is the characteristic equation, which we can look at right here. Just replace all the d's with lambdas. And then solving for these roots is pretty trivial. Lambda 1 is equal to negative 1, because that goes to 0 when lambda is equal to negative 1. And then finding the roots of this is pretty simple. We'll call those lambda 2 and lambda, or lambda 2 and lambda 3, which I can find by just evaluating the quadratic equation. So minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times 8 over uh, 2a. We can just plug into that and solve for the roots lambda 2 and lambda 3, and you get minus 4 over 2, which is a negative 2, and then this ends up being, whoop, this ends up being a negative 16, which is j4, j4 divided by 2 is j2. So we actually end up with some complex conjugate roots in this case. Let's think about where these live in the complex plane. So here is my real axis, here is my imaginary axis. Lambda 1 is negative 1, so it's just on the real axis at minus 1. Lambda 2 and lambda 3 are complex. They are at minus 2 plus or minus j2, so right here at minus 2, and then plus or minus plus j2 minus j2. So that's where the roots are in the complex plane for this system. Looking at it, we can see that all the roots are in the LHP, which is the left-hand plane. So since all roots are in the left-hand plane, we know that this is a stable system. All right, let's do another one. Here's another system described by a differential equation. Notice that we don't care what goes on over here in terms of system stability. Everything related to system stability is on the left. We can get the characteristic equation very easily by inspection. It is as follows. We set that equal to 0. We see that lambda 1 is equal to 1 this time. This polynomial here, we already solved for its roots in part A. We know that those roots are minus 2 plus or minus j2. If we plot these root locations in the complex plane, lambda 1 is at 1. And lambda 2 and 3 are at minus 2 plus or minus j2, so they're where they were last time. So the only difference is the root that was at minus 1 has now moved to positive 1. Well, that's a problem because this is a root in the right half plane. We have a root to the right side of the imaginary axis. If we have a root to the right side of the imaginary axis, that is going to be an unstable system. This is how it's going to have a response that blows up as a function of time. So this system is not stable. It's unstable. All right, let's do part C. Here's another system description. Again, we don't care about the right side. From system stability perspective, all that matters is the polynomial on the left from which we get our characteristic equation. So that equals 0. That's the characteristic equation. Lambda 1 is negative 2. And then if we look at this, we see that the roots of that are plus minus j2. So j2 squared would be minus 4, and minus j2 squared would be minus 4 as well. So this has roots in the complex plane. One is at minus 2. And then the others have no real component. So they are going to be on the imaginary axis. They're just at plus and minus j2. So this is interesting. We now have roots on the imaginary axis. Anytime we have roots on the imaginary axis, this corresponds to a system that is marginally stable. So since the roots are on the axis, this is a marginally stable system. All right, and finally, one more system, part D here. Here is our system description. The characteristic equation of the system is lambda 1 times lambda squared plus 4 quantity squared. So notice the only difference between part C and part D is we've added a squared there. So lambda 1 is negative 1. We know what the roots of lambda squared plus 4 are. It's just plus or minus j2. But these are repeated roots. Since we have this squared, these roots are in the same location. They're still at plus or minus j2. But now at each spot, so at j2, there's now two roots there. And at minus j2, there are actually two roots there. So lambda 1 root, I had drawn the same way. 
When I draw the root at J2, though, I put a little 2 next to it to indicate that this is a second-order root. Same thing at minus J2. I write a little 2 next to it to indicate that this is a root of order 2. If this had been 7, I would have written a 7 right there. Okay, So the numbers that you write down there correspond to the order of the root. When the order of the root is 1, like this is, we don't bother writing down the 1. It's just implied that it's just a first order root. So now looking at this, we still have roots on the imaginary axis, but these are repeated roots on the imaginary axis. And that's very different from a system stability perspective. This means that this system is unstable. So having a single order root on the imaginary axis is marginally stable. If you have repeated roots on the imaginary axis, then you are an unstable system.